welcome to a lecture series on real analysis. In the previous lecture, we have seen a result on perfect set. In this lecture, we are going to construct some set and we will prove that set is perfect. Okay, what is the set that we are going to construct? The set is called as Cantor set. Okay, first let me take an open, sorry, a closed interval 0, 1 and let me denote this by E1. Right? So, what I am going to do is that I have this thing, right? It is 0, 1. I am going to split this into equal 3 parts. So, this will be the case, right? Here, the middle one, okay, the segment, I am going to remove the segment. Uh, I am going to remove the segment that is open interval from E1. So, and I am going to name it E2. So, my E2 will be what? It is going to be the union of 0, 1 upon 3 union, 2 upon 3, comma 1. Now, what we are going to do is that, so this is the case that we have, right? Again, we are going to divide these things into three parts and we are going to remove the middle ones. So, it is going to be a 1 upon 9 and 2 upon 9 and it is going to be 7 upon 9 and 8 upon 9. After removing this from E2, I am going to have some set called E3 and this is going to be 0, 1 upon 9 union 2 upon 9, 3 upon 9 which is 1 by 3. Okay, <coughs> Union 2 upon 3 or it may be written as 6 upon 9, 7 upon 9 union 8 upon 9, 1. Right? So it is going to be E3. In a similar way, we are go we are going to remove the middle segment from this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and we are going to make the union. Okay. In general, En. In this way, we the construction can be proceeded, and this En is going to consist of how many things? Here, uh, for easier notation, suppose we call this to be E0 and this to be E1, E2, okay. Let us have this way, just for convenience purpose. Now you may notice that your E0 consists of only one interval, E1 is consisting of union of two intervals, your E2 is consisting of union of four intervals. In this case, En would be what? En is the union of 2 power n intervals. Okay, so here 0. So 2 power 0 is 1, 2 power 1 is 2, 2 power 2 is 4. In a similar way, you will have En as the union of 2 power n intervals and each of length what? That is a question, right? So here the length is 1, length of the interval is 1. Here the length of each interval is 1 upon 3. Here the length of each interval is 1 upon 9. So, does it have any common thing? Yes. It is coming in the path of 3. Okay. Here also we may have 1. This may be considered as 3, 3 power 0. So, we have it in the form of 3 power n. So, each of length 1 upon 3 power n or it may be simply written as 3 power minus 1. Right. And here you may notice that your E naught is a bigger set then E1. E1 is a bigger set than E2. So, it is going this way. Right? So, the construction is proceeded in this way and we are going to define some set P that is going to be the intersection of these ENs. Okay? This set is called as Cantor set. Okay, now let us see what kind of set is this Cantor set. Uh, here, you may notice that what? Uh, here you are having something of this sort, right? So, this is going to be union of all these here. The metric space that we are considering is the real line with standard Euclidean metric. So, your closed intervals are 
closed sets so it is going to be what union of closed sets right so this way you have something of this sort so you have you have these to be closed sets and finally when you make the intersection you are going to get what you will land again in a closed set and the set is also bounded whatever may be the set that you take that may be e1 e2 or e10 e11 e100 e1000 whatever may be the thing the values will lie between 0 and 1 okay the all the entries of the set lie between 0 and 1 therefore the set is turning to be bounded as well here we are talking in the euclidean space with k value 1 so your cantor set is an example of compact set right now we are going to prove cantor set is perfect in order to prove cantor set okay let me denote let p be the cantor set okay i have to prove what i have to prove this p is compact sorry can uh, perfect okay to prove p is perfect what should i do i have to prove p is closed and every point of p is a limit point of p right this is what i need to prove okay we know from the construction of the cantor set itself we know that p is compact okay and all the compact sets are what closed sets okay and this proves your set as that is your set as closed now we need to prove every point of p is a limit point okay let me choose a point in b right so what kind of set this p is it is going to be a union of several closed intervals right so let that be there and let me choose uh, let s be some segment uh which contains x as of now i don't have any relation for uh, this s and p the only thing that i have is uh, your p is going to be a union of some kind of this is some kind of intervals okay so this is union uh, this union as p and i take some s which is a segment which contains x right and uh, we know that this p is going to be a union of intervals uh, let me write that too we know p is the union of intervals let me say that intervals to be in okay um, and since x is a member of p we have some in which is containing x okay uh, let in since we have okay let me denote this by in let in be the interval such that x belongs to in okay can we say this x is present in many ins it cannot be the case right so this is all these intervals are what in any thing all these intervals are going to be distinct right so it is present in some interval in okay now let me choose some point okay x and which is not same as x be the end point of i n that means my i n is either x n y n or y n x n right by the construction of p 
what we have this xn is a member of p right okay now what we have to do is that we have to choose n large enough so when you choose n large enough what are you going to get you will have your interval ion to be a very smaller interval right you are choosing n large enough such that your ion is contained in s right because this ion is going to consist the point x okay so you may have s is contained in ion or ion is contained in s but you when you choose n to be large enough you may have something of this sort okay either way is possible here we are choosing some ion of this sort okay so such that it is happening now you may treat this s to be the neighborhood of x because in real life the neighborhoods under standard euclidean metric the neighborhoods are going to be segments right so i am treating this segment to be the neighborhood of x okay uh, consider s yes, as the neighborhood of x so you have ion is contained in s hence what you have is p intersection s okay is not empty because what you have s in common also your ion is having the point x n which is a member of p as well as it is a member of ion so when it is a member of ion it is a member of p as well so this is not empty in particular we have x n which is not same as x is a member of p intersection s this tells you what in the neighborhood you have some other point then x which is a point of p this proves x is a limit point of p right so you have taken an arbitrary point in p and finally you proved that is a limit point of p so combining these two things here we have proof p is closed here arbitrary point in p is a limit point of p combining these two things you may say what your p is perfect that is here we have proof can the set is perfect so we have seen some examples of perfect sets in one of the previous lectures and in this lecture we have seen one more example of a perfect set that is cantor set this cantor set is is an example of both compact set as well as perfect set we have come to the end of this lecture if you have any queries you can post it in the comment section that will be clarified within 24 hours of time thank you for watching